Hi, folks. Welcome back to my regular subscribers and to my new subscribers and viewers. Welcome. Before we get started, I want to say if you think my content is worth listening to and they got my opinions on certain topics are interesting, please click that subscribe button and please share it the best you can. So let's get to the story from Fox News. Hunter Biden scandal, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC completely avoid the New York Times report verifying laptop emails from 2020. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It's what well, they call that a liable mission. The report verified Hunter Biden's emails after multiple outlets suggested they were Russian disinformation. That's the catch all phrase. Or something they don't want to cover. We have integrity in journalism. There's a video down below Brian Stelter trying to defend CNN's integrity in journalism in 2017 and 18 and 19. You got to be kidding me, right? Let's read on. It was once routine that damning reports about the president published by the New York Times would be read nearly every news program. This is no longer the case, at least under President Biden. Yeah, this is what you get. This is their response to the New York Times article saying, okay, you finally have to admit the Hunter Biden laptop fiasco is real and the stuff that's in it is real and the world is round. Here's the reaction from the mainstream media. Yep. So what is that? A lie of omission. Let's read on. The Times ran a lengthy story Wednesday diving into the Justice Department's ongoing investigation of Hunter, of Biden's son Hunter and how a grand jury is still collecting witness testimony and records regarding his business dealings overseas. The Times also verified explosive emails first public in the New York Post in October 2020, just weeks before the presidential elect implicated then-candidate Biden despite public denials that he had anything to do with his son's finances. Yeah, the New York Post got thrown off at Twitter. Their story, their breaking story on the laptop got thrown off. All the mainstream media, YouTube included, everything. They're basically barred from Twitter. The oldest newspaper in the United States, if I'm not mistaken. They had evidence. And it was a terrible blow to the Biden campaign. So the DNC... And all the progressives all went to their friends in the media, especially social media, because Facebook and Twitter banned, banned any information at all concerning the laptop using the excuse it might have been stolen. Information might have been taken from the laptop, which was a stolen item. That's never happened before. Never. This has been settled law for eons. That used the Pentagon Papers as a classic example, I believe, it's from the 70s. That, yes, leaked information, stolen, which is really the same, is fair game under the First Amendment for freedom of press. Period. Unbelievable. And then when Project Veritas has Ashley Biden's diary, which they say was stolen, they couldn't verify if it was true or not, but that was an authentic uh, diary. Uh, you know what? They try to turn it back in. What was their reward? Getting raided by the FBI. They had a Project Veritas and several of their reporters. So you screw up and you, and you act like a piece of crap, you get rewarded. You try to do the right thing and have some journalistic integrity, you get raided by the FBI at 4 o'clock in the morning with guns drawn. Let's read on. The Times also verified the explosive emails, right? We went through that. Since Wednesday evening, the Times report has received zero attention on the five major networks. Think about that for a minute. Not just a 30-second blip here. Zero attention on the five major networks. When was the last time a major story had that? It's amazing to me. Journalism and journalistic integrity? You got to be kidding, right? And of course, their response as usual is, yeah, 
the famous crickets. I want to say, before we go on, I want to say this. If this was Donald Trump and Donald Trump Jr., and Jr. and Sr. were making these same deals when Trump was president, I would be all over it, even though I am a Trump fan. Still am. Would support him if he ran again. I would be all over their all over it. And so would they, by the way. ABC, CBS, NBC made no mention of Hunter Biden in their morning and evening newscast on a Thursday or Friday. I guess there's a, a company that has transcripts. I guess you subscribe to it. It will give you the transcripts of all the major media outlets and what they said word for word in each one of their segments. Neither CNN nor MSNBC dedicated time to the ongoing scandal, despite being a 24-hour news network. Well, they got something to occupy their time now. It's called Ukraine. You know, it's like a dog and a squirrel. Oh, there's a squirrel. Oh, there's another squirrel. Oh, we'll just divert people's attention to everything else, but to what we want them to see. Additionally, CNN media correspondent Brian Stelter, what a piece. You know what? I know it's not very Christian, especially during Lent. This guy is such a piece of garbage. I mean, it's just it's just so appalling to me that people of such low IQs, low integrity, low journalistic ethics could rise so high. And he has a show called Reliable Sources. What did Elon Musk say? If irony was a disease, most of these people would be all dead. He didn't mention the New York Times article, but he did mention about Meghan Merkel's newest podcast. Well, that's breaking news. In November, the five networks seemingly avoided another Times report that alleged an investment firm that courts, excuse me, that counts Hunter Biden as his founder, helped a Chinese company purchase one of the world's most lucrative cobalt mines. Now I'm going to go through this. You know, you can read it if you want to. CNN's top executives, including then President Jeff Zucker and political director David Shalane, were caught telling staff on a conference call that they were spiking the post reporting on Hunter Biden, according to Link Audio Taste, published by Project Veritas. Saw the video, go back to their YouTube channel, Project Veritas, and they were listening in on the conference calls every morning of CNN, Zucker, and all the main big shots in CNN going over what they're going to cover that day and not cover and what they're going to push. And after a while, they're all recorded. And after a while, James O'Keefe, the head of Project Veritas, cuts in to everybody and says, Hi, Mr. Zucker, it's James O'Keefe here. We've been listening to your morning briefing, so to speak, for quite a while now. He wanted to comment on, I'll tell you what, that's classic, a classic. Like I said, uh, you can read through this. I don't go want to go too long. People already kind of know what scumbags these people are. I'll use my famous line. These people suck so bad. Brian Stelter, staunch defender of the establishment media, who now who has a reputation among critics as being a hall monitor, was confronted by Washington Times correspondent Susan Ferreccio as the Hunter Biden scandal was unfolding in October 2020. A rare moment for anyone in the media to be pressed about the dismissal of the New York Post reporting. I'm not going to play the video, but, you know, don't you, don't you dare act like newsrooms don't have ethics in 2017 and 18. You got to be kidding me. You must be kidding. You can. Don't dare me all you want, Brian. I've been doing this for 30 years. Let me go on and on and on. And you can read the rest if you want to. I mean, you get the idea. I think it's, it's, if you read the whole article, you get a lot more information out of it. But it makes the videos here too long, so... And they they influenced the election. It wasn't Russian interference. What, they spent $45,000 on Facebook ads? And that was foreign countries that hate us don't pick sides in the election. They just cause chaos in our elections. It's always been that way, always will be that way. And we do the same thing. I'm not saying it's right, but all major powers do that. Especially now with the internet, 
it's either smaller countries or small groups of uh, individuals in an organization cause a little bit more havoc in that in that in that realm, and it's the way it is. They take it with a grain of salt. Again, a huge story by the New York Times, who hates Donald Trump's guts, and I'm being I'm holding back how they feel about Trump. Finally, says, folks. Breaking news, the world is round. Until next time, goodbye and good luck. (laughs) 